Come on, let's speak with some of the people who have recently been helped by Covermore. Michelle, you're a seasoned traveller. Tell me about this trip. This one started in November. I went to Cambodia for about a month on my own. And the other part of that trip was to go to Canada and see my family and meet up with my partner there. He stayed back in Australia. After that, we had decided to go to India and then um, went back to Asia for a little while, just Bangkok, Malaysia, Singapore, that kind of thing, and then made our way down to Indonesia for a surf trip. So the whole thing was about 10 months. So Bali really should have been the more relaxed part that was, of yeah, the trip. Yeah, that was the holiday part of the travels. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Well, we'd been there for about three weeks and just planned on going island hopping. So we were on Bali and like checked into this little guest house. It was our first night there and we were on the second floor of the balcony and I spent the night there and then the next morning I was on the balcony doing yoga and stuff and my partner had gone surfing and then um, he came back from surfing and was downstairs. So I grabbed my phone, my camera, went up to the railing just to take a photo of him and my hips, hips touched the wood railing as I leaned over to take the photo and then the entire railing just collapsed all around me so I went head first into the ground over him. This was head first from about 10, Ten or 12 feet, feet up? Yeah. But luckily my hands were because I had the camera so of course that was the first thing that hit the ground was my hands and then my face and chest and everything else. Were you knocked out at this point? No, but I was winded. I couldn't breathe and I was just kind of writhing in a bit of a ball. I couldn't breathe and, and then this woman from Australia, she's this woman called Jill from Adelaide, she came and ran over to help. So they just sort of wrapped my head up and got me stable and then asked me to like move my fingers, toes, all that kind of stuff, make sure I was okay. And then this woman's husband ran and grabbed their Jeep and put me in the back of a Jeep because there's no hospitals around anywhere, no emergencies, nothing. Went straight to a clinic. When you thought, I've broken my neck, yeah. what, what else was going through your mind? Just survival mode. Like, you know, of course I was thinking, I'm not going to see my family again, all that kind of stuff, or that I'd be in a wheelchair and, you know, we'll have to look after me the rest of my life, that kind of thing. That was a bit terrifying, but it was just like, I really had to just maintain some kind of strength because I thought oh, I can get through this and then every time the news got worse and worse I'm like okay I can get through this. Michelle can you tell us about the injuries that you did sustain? First and foremost was broken wrists and face lacerations, stomach like I scraped all that and I had big cuts in my head on my face and lacerated my liver and there was like a lot of blood in my abdomen. We were contacted by Michelle's partner uh, who told us that she had fallen off a balcony had fallen a considerable distance and was very sick in a local hospital. So we contacted the hospital. The hospital told us that she had internal bleeding and had fractured her first and second vertebrae in her neck. Now that immediately ran alarm bells because if you do fracture your first vertebrae in the neck, especially from a fall, you're almost certainly dead before you get to hospital. So we were um, a little bit concerned that whether they'd made the correct diagnosis or not. Were you concerned about medical treatment in Bali? Oh, yeah. I was terrified and when they had said that they wanted to operate on me, my partner, he just lost it and got on the phone with Ethan from Covermore and he was like, they want to cut her open and all this stuff and they were like, no. Your main stress was, I don't want to be cared for here in Denpasar. Yeah. And that was Covermore's reaction as well. Yes. Whatever the diagnosis with Michelle, one thing was clear in our initial assessment and that is that she couldn't stay at the hospital she was at. So while we were looking at ongoing plans to evacuate her to a first world location, we also had her transported to Denpasar, biggest hospital in Bali. She needed to go there anyway because that's where the airport is. And while she was in transit, we were looking at the fastest way to get her back to Australia. Now it turned out that the fastest way to get her home was to use an air ambulance company based in Singapore to pick her up in Bali and then fly her to Darwin, which is uh, what we did. So Covermore said to Will, don't worry, no one is going to touch her. That's right. They're not cutting her open here. That's right. We're going to get you out. That must have been an amazing vote of confidence. It was. It was. And when, when that doctor came in, um, it was sort of like, oh, they ball the uh, Balinese guys stepped, stepped aside a little bit. They were a bit like, oh, okay, you know, because they hadn't really done anything to me. And this guy came in and did like a full exam and then gave me, you know, a shot of painkillers and um, just settled the whole situation. I could see Will even just like sigh because it was finally like, okay, now we're in his hands that we can trust because we were terrified that something would go wrong. And if something did go wrong and we didn't have our insurance 
doctors or whatever looking after this then I would have had to have had something done there. Covermore actually had a couple of options for you. They had the Singaporean team come in so you could have gone back there and got medical care right, or you. come home to Australia. Yeah. It was Darwin all the way for me. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was close and I knew it was sophisticated. That was one of the main things I said to the Singaporean doctor. I'm like, whatever you can do, I just I just want to go home right now and I want it to be in Australia. So you're evacuated out of Bali, mm -hmm. you get to Darwin. Obviously, you're feeling a lot more relaxed by now, but yep. the care didn't stop there. No, um, I stayed in Darwin for about seven days to be observed because they didn't want to fly me again until they knew that I had fully recovered and reabsorbed all the blood that was in my stomach. And then they flew me, um, Covermore flew me back again, even to my own hometown, which was amazing. So they flew me back to Hobart, and then I had my surgery in Hobart. About, it was about two weeks after the accident. Have you got any idea how much this whole procedure would have cost you had you not had insurance? I, I was told that the airlift, just the airlift alone, was around thirty-three or $35,000. And that's just the airlift. And that's something that, you know, my family just, I mean, they would do it, but I mean, you, you just don't have that kind of money sitting around. What would you like to say to the Covermore customer care people that oh, you dealt with? Thanks a million. Um, I feel... I feel sort of, you know, I'm fit and healthy and alive and right because of these people. Travelling overseas is great, but it sure is comforting to know there's insurers with Covermore's level of care and expertise just in case the unexpected happens.